Hello everyone and welcome back to Los Notes. In the last few videos, we started talking about cell signaling and we covered everything about short distance signaling and the focus of this video will be about long distance signaling. In animals, the endocrine glands, such as the pituitary, the thyroid, and the pancreas, secrete hormones. Hormones are secreted into the extracellular fluid from where they go to the bloodstream and circulate in the body. The cell that secretes the hormones is the secreting cell. And the cell to which the hormone will bind to elicit a response in that cell is the target cell. If hormones circulate in the blood, then what prevents them from binding to any and all cells? The answer to that is that the target cells have receptors that are specific to the hormone. As you can see here, the hormones can fit on the receptors of these target cells, but not on other cells that have different receptors. Before we move on, it's important that we understand that there are three classes of hormones. We have protein or polypeptide hormones, amine hormones, and steroid hormones. I've put just a few examples in each. So here, for example, insulin and glucagon are peptide hormones, where thyroxine and adrenaline are amine hormones. Estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisol, these are all steroid hormones. All polypeptides and most of the amine hormones are water soluble, whereas steroids and largely nonpolar hormones like thyroxine are lipid soluble. Why does it matter whether the hormones are water soluble or lipid soluble? It matters because the response pathways will be different. Let's start with water-soluble hormones. Once the hormones are released by exocytosis, they travel freely in the blood. Why freely? Because the blood is aqueous and these are water-soluble, so they can just freely move around in the blood. When they reach the target cell, they cannot cross the membrane because they are not lipid-soluble. Instead, they bind to receptors, protein receptors, that are found on the membrane of the cell. The binding of the hormone to the receptor initiates events at the plasma membrane that eventually lead to cell response. The series of events that will convert this chemical signal to a specific response in the cell is called signal transduction, and it will be covered in detail in my next few videos. What about lipid-soluble hormones? Now, because of their lipid nature, they don't need exocytosis. They can simply diffuse out of the cell. But once they reach the blood, because they are not water-soluble, they cannot just freely move in the blood. And that's why they need to be transported by transport proteins that attach to these hormones. Once these hormones reach the target cell, they diffuse through the membrane. Why? Because again, they are lipid soluble. They can cross the membrane. They don't have receptors that are on the surface of the cell. Instead, the receptors are in the cytoplasm or in the nucleus. And this hormone receptor complex initiates gene transcription, eliciting a response. Stay tuned for our next video where we will talk about signal transduction. Don't forget to like this video and leave comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye!